Eight months ago, this channel exclusively leaked the design of Zen 6, including everything from the layout of the chiplets to the die sizes and likely nodes of said chiplets, and even pictures of it that included details about the packaging. And unfortunately, especially on that last note, it seems that aspects of this leak were completely missed by much of the tech press, or at a minimum forgotten, or they wouldn't have reported on recent speculation that's circulating as an upgrade to what was already leaked a while ago. And you see, therein lies the problem. I am intentionally avoiding naming the names when it comes to the speculation content that is getting quoted by much of the tech press this week, and that's because in my experience, uh, when I name names, it leads to accusations that I am attacking creators, and I don't want to do that. In fact, speculation on YouTube is fun. I do it all the time. But I have to say that it can become bad when people forget that they were speculating, they weren't leaking, and that it becomes worse when websites report speculation or conversations and podcasts from time to time, I've noticed even, as fact. Because they just aren't always fact. Now look... I totally get why websites do this. They'll take something and add a little tagline and take the catchiest pictures and phrases from a given video or write up from somebody who's speculating and quote it as fact. They do it because it does get you a lot of short-term clicks and it has for these websites in the past. But you know, in practice, this often leads to a tremendous disappointment for the fans of these tech companies when a product comes out, doesn't have the fancy features or performance they feel like they were promised in previous write-ups on websites, and then they feel like they were lied to and take their rage out on these companies saying that the products are worse than they really are because they were overhyped about them, or they'll even take it out on tech creators like me. And I myself, in fact, are especially sensitive to this phenomena because it just, honestly, it seems like a large portion of the tech enthusiast zeitgeist thinks I was connected to every leak in history, which I wasn't. Like, for example, to this day, I still get comments on YouTube that say I was wrong about RDNA 3 being two to four times faster than RDNA 2, despite that being something that Greymon55 said, well, I said it would be at least 50% faster, and even with how disappointing the 7900 XTX was compared to what AMD promised, once the drivers matured, it did hit that minimum expectation I put out there. And so I still have to deal with the errors of other people, and I am sensitive to this. And that's why today I do feel like I need to correct recent speculation being reported as fact about Zen 6. But also because there really is a lot of confusion out there and a lot of unneeded worry. With people openly saying that they think Zen 6 might now have nerfed Vcash or something and cost twice as much as Zen 5 to manufacture. But the good news today for me to tell you is that it won't. That's right, it won't have nerfed Vcash, it won't have ridiculous costs. It might cost more than Zen 5, but it's not going to cost as much as Strix Halo laptops. And I actually have new information to add on top of stuff that I put out there in the past that makes this quite a juicy Zen 6 and RDNA 5 leak video. And so, yeah, before I get to that new information though, I just want to play a clip from that leak I put out at the beginning of this year, just to set the record straight. I am told that both the IO dies and the CCD chiplets, now this won't surprise anyone, but I'm confirming it, they're both fabbed at TSMC. But technically, I don't know the final nodes yet, although I do suspect that it is 2 nanometer for the CCD cores. And also, this one's a much bigger deal here, I'm also told that the fab UMC is fabricating the bridge die, allegedly. At least that was the plan as of the notes for this. And yes, no matter where it's made, I do know from seeing on diagrams, there is a bridge die beneath the CCD and the IO dies. And it's like right underneath them like this. But what's important is AMD is fundamentally changing how these CCD and IO dies communicate to each other and massively reducing latency. So I think this is going to probably be a Zen 2 moment for AMD. Oh, and a final thing to throw in. I'm also told that the packaging is done by SPIL. This is starting to get beyond what I analyze, but 
For anyone who wants to know, SPI on, I'm told from one of my contacts that it's probably based on their FOEB technology. And so there you go. No, look, I'm going to be entirely honest. I actually myself did forget that I said more than UMC. I did remember that I said UMC makes the uh, silicon bridge die for Zen 6 procs, but I forgot that I had also mentioned that SPIL does the packaging. And so I can forgive some people if they forgot that this was already out there, already on the record that this is what Zen 6 will do to get to higher performance for many of their products. But it's not just that, actually. I want to add on to that information from earlier this year today with this quote here from, well, one of my best AMD sources, one that I believe I've been conversing with for four years. This person reached out to me this week and said, I saw odd speculation circulating online regarding Zen 6's interconnect, and as such, I just want to reiterate that UMC makes the embedded silicon bridge, and also that SPIL is the OSAT for packaging. But then this person went on. The person said that I must also note that, much like V-cache layers, the silicon bridge is nearly negligible in thickness and passive. That passiveness, people, makes this a very, very cheap product. You can almost kind of think of it as like a signal integrity and latency booster that you add onto the product if you need it. This person said, and therefore, I see no reason why it would mess with Vcash and Zen 6, nor why it would be very expensive. This is a tech that we've person works at AMD, basically been using since MI200, and so I don't know why anyone would think we'd be scared to do it again in mainstream devices now that it's come down in cost, which, on that last note, Zen 6 Olympic Ridge, Medusa 1, and even Xbox Magnus all use silicon bridges. We could not afford to do that if it was expensive or prone to manufacturing bottlenecks. And so there you go. And you know what? That source is correct, by the way. Upon digging around online, I was reminded that AMD has done this before years ago. It is an alien technology, and it's actually, in my opinion, common sense that AMD would do this again and do it again with, you know, packaging partners that will be cheaper than TSMC to do this. And so able to be used for all of their mainstream products, or at least many of their mainstream products, not all of them. And uh, actually, next, I want to explain further why you shouldn't worry about the cost of the products that use silicon bridges with Zen 6, nor about Vcash having any nerfed problems in them as well. But first, an ad from a sponsor. This piece of content is brought to you by CDKeyOffer.com. CDKeyOffer.com is really the best place to go to get reasonable pricing on Microsoft software, whether that's Windows 11 operating systems or Office products like the ones that I installed on this new Strix Halo laptop that I was testing while I made this ad. You see, I actually use CDKeyOffer.com. I've used them many times. My family members use them. Uh, my friends use them when they're building new pieces. And that's because they've been a reliable sponsor of Moore's Law is Dead for years now. And so if you're looking to get, say, a new laptop or you just finally want to get a legitimate key of one of the latest Office products on your desktop during back to school, use cdkeyoffer.com's offer codes of broken silicon to save 25% on all Microsoft products. And then actually you can also use offer code DieShrink to save 3% on everything else on their website like games as well. Once again, I want to thank cdkeyoffer.com for sponsoring this content, like all the other content that they've sponsored, and and for making it easy for me to get a good price on Office on my new laptop. All right, so just to put a bow on this video, let's further talk about the cost and Vcash concerns when it comes to Zen 6 using embedded silicon bridges. And first, I do want to touch on the cost aspects. So when it comes to cost, first of all, Look, I know that Xbox loves milking its fans, but still, at the end of the day, Xbox Magnus, which yes, I intend to leak much more information about soon, make sure you're subscribed, but at the end of the day, Xbox Magnus is still a console, and that means that even if it costs more than you want it to, they cannot use silicon bridges if it means it will cost $2,000 or something. Speaking of $2,000 or something, I know Strix Halo laptops often cost $2,000 or more, and they don't have silicon bridges, but if you look at... The information that's out there already about RDNA 5 and Zen 6, you can see that AT3 and AT4 budget dedicated graphics cards that are positioned in AMD's lineup below AT2, AT2 is used in the Xbox Magnus, 
those are also going to be able to use these silicon bridges and possibly even use them in the budget dedicated graphics card iterations uh, they'll also use these with medusa point which is supposed to be cheaper than halo products and also even in olympic ridge the desktop zen 6 lineup i know there will be maybe a thousand dollar 24 core v cache zen 6 products on am5 or something but this will be a lineup that scales all the way down to 300 dollars if this was expensive technology silicon bridges that is they would not use that for consumer desktop on am5 it just wouldn't make sense there's just too many products that use these silicon bridges or at least can use them for me to say that it makes sense to worry that this would make the thing expensive at least not more expensive than the stuff being used in strix halo oh and again spil is much cheaper than tsmc for this packaging that's who amd is using not tsmc so you don't need to worry about that either uh but yeah look there will be some cost adder i'm sure to using silicon bridges but i do want to throw out one more thing regarding this technology that is speculation now it's informed speculation by a conversation with somebody at amd this week but Still, let me say that it is speculation, but keep in mind that, well, in the case of Xbox Magnus, yes, that will use a silicon bridge. I am directly told that that's necessary for the complex communications you will need by having one die with the CPU and one die with the GPU and memory controller. Makes sense. But I don't think we should assume that all products that have the silicon bridge ability will always use it with everything that they are connected to. Now, they might. I, I could be completely wrong here, but at least someone at AMD told me that it is plausible that whatever they're doing or that what they are doing, I should say, you know, like someone working on CPU knows that a thing they're working on uses a silicon bridge. They think it is plausible that much like Navi 31 and 32 with RDNA 3, that you don't always need to use it that like the silicon bridge is an optional signal latency booster and that for the more budget products it might not even be necessary so again the use of silicon bridges for a lot of fancy products doesn't necessarily it could i could be wrong doesn't necessarily mean everything in the lineup that can use them will use them although again if xbox magnus is using it that's a console that tells me it probably doesn't cost that much and perhaps at3 and at4 even the budget GPUs will use silicon bridges to connect the media die to the graphics die. That's possible, but if that's true, that actually just makes my argument even stronger. Again, if that is true, AMD would not be using silicon bridges if it added a ton of cost. All right, so that's the cost aspect. I wanted to get into the weeds regarding it, but the long story short on it is, if you wanted to tell a friend what my point was, pretty much most of Zen 6 products use silicon bridges and AMD intends to take market share. Uh, over the next couple years with Zen 6 and with RDNA 5, they would not do that if the silicon bridges cost a ton or were some potential manufacturing bottleneck for them. But all right, now let's get to the Vcash worry. And oh boy, was there worry. My YouTube comments blew up with people worrying that Vcash couldn't be at the bottom of the die anymore and that speculation out there suggested that Zen 6 was going to get nerfed Vcash or something if it had a bridge die. Well, look. I can't say what I'm about to say for 100%, you know, but again, I got to say, uh, one of my AMD sources said that they don't think this would be an issue, that this is a passive uh, bridge die that's incredibly thin like Vcash, that it's almost negligible in size, that it's very easy to design around and still fit Vcash under the CCD. So that person at AMD wasn't 100% sure about this from the stuff they were able to work on and see, but they don't think it would probably be an issue. But in addition to that, I have to say this as well. It's public knowledge that AMD saw the thermal issues from Vcash being on the top of the die, right? Because you have the heatsink, Vcash, CPU, Vcash gets in the way of the thermal heat transfer to the, like, that was an issue with Zen 3 X3D and Zen 4 X3D. They fixed that by putting it under the die so that the CPU cores would still be closer to the heat sink and transfer the heat better, right? AMD has said on the record that that was the biggest issue with X3D and kind of made it sound like that it was overdue that they finally solved it with Zen 5. I'm going to say... Why would AMD do anything that jeopardizes what they call the biggest issue with X3D? Why would they go backwards with a problem that probably took them a decent amount of money to solve? I don't think they would. And so that's basically my answer. 
An AMD source of mine doesn't think this will be an issue for having Vcash on the bottom of the CCD. And I don't think AMD would go backwards in what was, according to their own words, a huge improvement in Vcash products. And so there you go. Don't worry, gamers. Zen 6 will have high clocks with Vcash, just like Zen 5. You don't need to worry. And uh, yeah. That is going to do it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please make sure that you subscribe to the YouTube channel, Moore's Law is Dead, and ring the bell button so that you get upcoming leaks and information. There will be upcoming Xbox leaks, uh, upcoming, I mean, a flurry of upcoming Zen 6 through Zen 8, and maybe even Zen 9 leaks, Titan Lake, Razor Lake. PlayStation leaks. There's a lot of content coming down the pipeline, so make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss it. Speaking of content, you can get access to more content if you support Moore's Law is Dead on Patreon. Even the lowest tier gets access to the new die shrink that just dropped, going over things like Intel bailout money, X970 for Zen 6, and uh, where NVIDIA is in the AI bubble right now compared to the dot-com bubble. There's actually a lot of other cool stuff in there. I actually think that was one of the better die shrinks that we've done. Just a bonus, like, one-hour video for those who like this content. You can get more for just the $1 tier. And then also share, comment below, and, well, look, at a minimum, if you made it this far into the video, thank you for watching. <laughs>